Hi, Gare. Welcome to Conscious Living. I'm Wendy Garrett. Thank you for listening. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the opportunity to make a connection. And if you hear something here that you can use, great. Pass it on. Um, the other thing, too, is that sometimes certain methods work better for others than they do for us. And so if there's something here that you might need to tweak to make it work better for yourself, that's really the whole game. Um, there's no one size, one answer, one fit. The beauty of being here and everyone having their own opportunity to create, manifest, grow, develop, evolve is that everyone has a unique connection, something that's super, super special. The trick is to find it. <laughs> and that uh, is what lifetimes are about. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk today a little more personally about what's going on and some of the things that are happening and it really gives me a chance to kind of uh, share a little bit more of how I view this and why I choose the types of interviews I do. For 20 some years, I was a broadcaster and that just meant that I did um, different types of audio presentations. Okay. I learned how to be a newscaster, learned how to be a DJ, learned how to be a voiceover talent, learned how to be, um, uh, did a lot of public events and just all sorts of media type experiences. That for me was a way of learning how to present myself, learning how to capture information and then repost it, you know, share it, regurgitate it, whatever it was. The pro problem was that as a, um, there comes a point when you realize you're just sharing everybody else's stuff and some of it you may not agree with. Some of it may, you actually may really um, have a totally opposite viewpoint, but you're still part of that mechanism, the machinery that hands out that content. And so when I finally decided to get out of that, I realized I still loved making connections with people and doing the interviews. And in my, um, my personal um, world at this point, when I shifted from that uh, conventional type of broadcast media into doing it on my own through the beauty of blogging and um, other types of, of web ventures, I could choose. And I didn't have anybody sitting back and saying, well, no, you shouldn't talk to this person or this person doesn't raise enough money or that person isn't, you know, um, a, a connection that we can take advantage of in some way, shape or form. I saw people doing things that I thought were helpful and amazing and creative and innovative and giving others a way to set themselves free of that. Part of this is about how you think and what you think and developing your own mind and realizing you're being programmed. And that isn't a bad thing. From the time we're little, we enter into a world where we are going to mimic, mirror, manifest, create, and recreate. It's all about knowing that that's what we do and we can change it. We don't have to take on anybody else's program. We can learn. It gives you a good foundation. And wherever you are, whatever part of the world you come from, you have that solid foundation, that preset into whatever culture you have been born into, how your world works. The thing is, we are all different. And in different parts of the world, the world works differently. The one thing we have is that intuitive connection that consciousness that gives us the freedom to get out of the lockstep of whatever frame of reference, cultural, social um, bias that we have presented to us. And we can say, I will try that, but that isn't me. And we discover who me, who I am as we explore. Some of those things we try on for a little while to see if they fit. And if they don't, we pass. Sometimes they work great and then something else comes along and we forget what worked great while we try something else. And then, you know, years later, go back and say, well, why didn't I keep doing this? Simply because the time had passed and we evolved and moved on to something else. And so we go back and reincorporate that wonderful little thing that we left along the wayside for a little while and bring it back in. And as we continue to do that kind of thing, we evolve. We transcend. We become more than what we were to, be, to begin with. Now, for me, when I started out as a kid, I had a lot of other experiences with um, the unseen world. 
not all of them I could talk about because at that point, you're just experiencing the world and assuming everybody else sees what you see. But when my mom told me that I had an imaginary friend who left me uh, when I was about five, four and a half or five, and I said, you know, um, you flew out the window. I never spoke of, of that companion again, but I had spent hours and um, lots of time telling mom about these experiences. So it, it wasn't, a, for me, an imaginary thing. It was my reality. The adults didn't see it. They didn't make it um, anything that could be attributed to as crazy. It was just a different viewpoint. And a lot of children have that, especially when you're talking. They've given this wonderful label of indigo children. It's been there all along. It's, it's just that we are now able to talk about it and give it a name and some kind of label and say, okay, this is new. It, the, the new thing about it is that there are more numbers and more uh, ways to track it, ways to give it a quantifiable basis, data, data, whatever you want to prefer to, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. That's how we tend to give credence or credibility, credibility to our world is if it has some kind of documentation, some kind of valid reference point where we can go back and say, oh, this happened, yes, and the study says this, and the numbers show that, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the problem with a lot of this other stuff that we're experiencing right now is there are no studies. There is no credible data that says, okay, UFOs are real, um, angels are real, um, imaginary friends are real. So those of us who have those experiences <laughs> are stuck going, okie doke, you have your reality and I have mine. The thing about this reality that I have that I wanted to share and give you an uh, awareness, an ability, a way to create more of that in your own field if you're not already doing that. Because if you're listening, most likely some of this is already, you know, second nature to you. But if, if you want to expand that and you want to pay more attention to it, that's how it develops. And the first thing to do is get rid of any kind of wording, language, anything that says you are not normal. This is unreal. Say, what happens if maybe you, the first thing you do is you suspend disbelief, you suspend doubt and just let it be neutral. When you go into that neutral state, everything is possible and you give the benefit of a doubt to whatever is appearing to you so that you may learn more. Now, not only does that change the experience, the experience that you're having, it changes your energy. And it changes your energy in a way that allows you to experience something without giving it a label or predispositioning it to be a negative. In that way, we grow and we embrace a greater, a greater sense of knowing, a greater sense of being. And those on the other dimensions, other planes, see that. They see our energy. They sense our energy. We're limited in the language that we use to be able to describe these events. But that's how, for me, I can explain it. That's how I can give it words, to give it a context and give it some kind of depth dimension that you can tune into. A lot of this has to do with um, your own presence and your own whatever you have developed set point of being comfortable in the world. And those things that you are fully comfortable with, you create more of. And people can talk about the law of attraction. There's another, another thing that goes into this, the law of reciprocity. You get what you put out. Whatever you are in your set point tends to recreate itself in your area, your arena, your environment, the dimension. Uh, the wonderful things I've had access to uh, in terms of the metaphysical aspect has been the the sense that I am not alone. And it doesn't matter whether I see these companions or this element or not. The inf information I get is borne out through living it and getting results. At one point I was told, you know, those little water bottles, the other water containers that have the filters that, that give you a better 
quality of water. Well, five or six years ago, this is before we knew about um, another element I'll tell in just a minute. I was getting this voice that said, throw away the, the water filter, throw away that. And it's, they're not cheap. <laughs> these little, you know, these, I thought, okay. And I had two, I had one that I put distilled water in that was just a plastic container. And that I had inherited from somebody else. It was like a two gallon uh, container. And the other one was the filter. And I used that for the, the tap water. And it was, the, the directive was to get rid of it. Just the, these things were not helpful. So I got rid of them thinking, well, that was just, you know, I have no idea, but it seemed like the right thing to do. And then we come out with the information about BPA and the kinds of things that are involved in uh, the production of the plastic and everything was being eliminated. The BPA, the plastics were being made in a new way so that that part was not included. In the meantime, though, those were the elements. That was what was wrong with the plastic that I had. It was prior to that BPA-free incarnation. So sometimes these this information, and that wasn't intuition. There's a difference. Some of this is about being able to expand your sense of conscious awareness to other levels of being, other levels of information. And we don't have words that adequately describe those different dimensions. However, what you can do is find someone who speaks a language that you understand and gives words that make sense to you and follow that to learn your own way. I have, (laughs) I've read thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pieces of advice that came from different sources. And what I did was create little recipes with those bits and pieces to make better sense of my own experiences. Some of it came with learning about different colors and how those colors make an impact on my world. Learning about how different sounds make an impact on my world. How I respond differently to different types of situations. When someone tells me what to do, I may back off and say, wait a minute, I don't know if I want to do that. When someone invites me to do something, I'll again reconsider, is it something I want to do? Or someone uh, suggests that I do something. My reaction to all of those things is going to be different given my preset of how that has been experienced for me. An invitation, sure, I think I have something I want to do. Being told, well, that that takes a lot of relief off of it. Okay, fine, yeah, I'll just do it because I have been told. (laughs) Or suggested, well, you can do it if you want to, or maybe not. Oh, there's no harm there. Um, Hmm, maybe I want to do something. But those types of situations are what we really have to learn about ourselves. So some of this manifesting and this raising our consciousness and our vibration also includes doing some self-work, going back and understanding what pushes your buttons. Why do you have a certain belief about the easiest one, males and females? Why do you have a certain belief about animals? Do they have a lesser value than us? Are there some that are supposed to be used for food versus others that are supposed to be used as entertainment? You know, all of these things, there is no right or wrong. There is an awareness and an understanding. And when you become more aware of how vibrant and vital and fluid and alive everything in your surrounding is, you shift your consciousness. You shift your way of being in the world. Everything becomes an opportunity to experience, to see, to feel, to sense, to become a greater whole, a greater awareness, a greater being. It doesn't mean when this happens 
that all of a sudden your whole life becomes different and everything goes away. And now you have this wonderful little cloud that you go around on and go, okay, poof, lightning there, lightning there. Yeah, you should be doing this. You should be. No, it, it becomes more of a, I can understand why certain things have to go a certain way in order for us to get it. Sometimes we have to experience the negative result to appreciate a positive outcome. The only way we are going to get from point A to point B is to actually go the wrong direction. (laughs) Oh boy. Okay. It's like when you're learning to walk, you don't just automatic and automatically, you know, start walking upright. Okay. Got, see ya. Mm -hmm. Now I'm skating. Okay. Now I'm flying. Now I'm doing, there's a learning curve. And the learning curve is tempered by all of those in your circle who are saying, Oh no, don't walk. No, no, no. You're going to fall. You're going to fall. Ooh, ooh, ah, ee. Okay. Now, do you feel that vibration of that, that, that way of being when someone's around you tensing up going, you know, all of that fear, all of that fright factor. Okay. That comes at you as well. And some people are really good at shielding it. Some people don't have any awareness of it. And some people are reactive. So they take that in and go, well, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to walk. No, I can't do that. But if you have somebody around you going, yeah, just, just, just do it. Okay. Okay. Go, go ahead now walk. And when you take that first fall, Hey, oh, whoa. Hey, no. What's this about? They didn't tell you you were going to fall. You just fell. Surprise. And there it is. You pick yourself up and you go on. Or you sit there and you might go, ah, ow, depending on how you fell. But all of that creates your environment. Your awareness, your way of being in the world, your reactions. If you reacted to the fall with, oh, <laughs> Jew, I just fell. No big deal. Back up. Or I fell. Oh, ow. Drama. And not only that, that drama of, look at me, I fell. Okay, that takes it to the next level. <laughs> See, I fell. There's also the, oh, don't look at me, I fell. Whoops. Okay, so the, all of these things create your presence. What other people look at you and go, hmm, about, and they are entitled to look at go, hmm, you aren't necessarily expected to get caught up in that. If you want to learn and expand your conscious awareness, you have to just let some of that other stuff go as you explore and learn and trust your sense of navigation. When I get my information, it comes from what I refer to as guides. I have been given names. I have been given information. I don't know if it's accurate. I don't know if it's real for anyone else. I do know that when I follow the information and when I accept the guidance and I trust I can usually get a good result. I also know that the more comfortable I get at one level, there will then be eventually another element that takes it up a notch. And I will have to redo that and test because it's like being in one dimension where you get comfortable walking. Okay, I can walk now. And then I look around and I see things are speeding up. Well, I need to start, I need to start kind of, you know, maybe jogging a little more to keep up with this, but I have to feel comfortable jogging and the muscles are a little sore at first from that kind of activity because I haven't done that before. And then I work up to running. As I work up to running, I have to develop different muscles, a different stamina, a different way of breathing, a different way of holding myself to keep up the pace. Okay. This is what you're doing on a consciousness level learning how to be and learning how to keep that rhythm going and also learning that you are not going to continually have the same rhythm. And when you don't have that rhythm, then your messages, your information from your environment will flow differently. One of the first things I got from the guides as we started from ground zero, breathe. They told me about prana. Now, in my native tongue, prana is not, it isn't part of it. So I knew this was something outside of myself, working on prana. 
As I did that, I learned how very important it was to be able to pace yourself when you're doing any kind of work. Recently, I had an interview with Richard Gordon. I really am incredibly grateful for his work. It spells out very easily how we can heal. Now, there are different languages and cultures and societies throughout the world that value breath. And there are different classes you can take on how to breathe and how to do quantum touch, quantum healing, that kind of thing. Before, they didn't call it. They just called energy work. I worked with a, uh, a gifted man, Mia Tekwirkus, and did a session. It was a weekend session. These things aren't cheap. Um, but I knew the background, and I knew that that was a, another step that included, in my um, vocabulary, chi, working with a prana and the life force and seeing how that works when you use it with other people. And so now when we are getting to a, a more advanced state of knowing, um, I be, believe it was Barbara Brennan who had the book Hands of Healing, and um, I th- there, are, there are different different courses you can take that talk about the light body. And that really, for me, connected. However, the shamanic work I got was what made it all stick. And when the guides told me to do toning and to make different kinds of noises to break up a mass or a nodule in my own body, and I saw the results, I worked in conjunction with a massage worker. And so I would say out loud the information I was getting, and she would was working on the different muscles to help break it up. And Richard addresses that in the book, talking about no matter who is there helping to assist and hold the charge in healing, the person who's being worked on actually does the work. And when you see these people around the world who are healers, and they don't necessarily um, go for the accolades, they just do the work. Then you understand the recipient also has a very powerful role in that healing process. It's about being able to suspend disbelief, being able to allow that there is more than one reality. As a matter of fact, there are multiple realities. Those realities are created by the people all around you. Each one has a viewpoint, a way of believing and being in the world. And when they are very powerful in their creation, sometimes it can upset your apple cart because they come in with their belief and they can counter your belief. This is where it gets really interesting because when you want to experience these other realities, you simply spend time with people who created very solid realities of their own that they can invite you into and you can get a jump start. All right, we're going to talk about that because that relates to ghosts. That relates to the unseen. And that's next. I'm Wendy Garrett. This is Conscious Living on Empower Radio. Hi there. Conscious Living on Empower Radio. I'm Wendy Garrett. Thanks for tuning in. Basically talking today about how to expand and um, open up your awareness in terms of consciousness, in terms of creating and manifesting. And a lot of that has to do with, again, the way you think. What you think is possible. Do you believe it? Can you do it? Is it okay? Are there repercussions? Should you ask first? (laughs) Okay, part of it is that you're going to do it one way or the other. The The way to do it with a, a positive focus is to remember there's one golden rule. One golden rule. Do no harm. When you do this with the intent to simply upgrade your own ability, your own awareness, your own experience of being in the world, there's a greater purpose because you're expanding that element for yourself and everybody around you. We all benefit 
when you're working for the highest good. So when you're around somebody like the Dalai Lama or somebody who has been super focused at working their energy in a certain direction, you benefit from that vibration. You benefit from being in their space. So them doing their work. There's a wonderful movie called IP Man. And that shows as he goes about his process of working with his martial arts day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, practice, 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 over, 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 repeat, repeat, repeat. He becomes fluid and fluent in working his energy. That's what you're doing. You're just doing it a different way. And you may not be um, someone who is considered an expert in any main field. You don't have to be. You can be fluent and fluid in working your own process. But that means being aware of what your body is telling you, of what your words are telling you, of what your language says about you. When you want to open to that other realm, it will speak back to you, given what you have put out. And sometimes you're contacted just because you are aware. And it's a way of taking it to the next level. When I talk with Penny Kelly, and she's one of the interviews you can listen to here on Empower Radio, she talked about, at one point, um, the Kundalini Awakening. And if if you're doing this work, that that is part of it. It isn't something we can always identify, or it isn't always as as dramatic as some people experience it. Sometimes it's just one piece at a time. But I know when mine hit my third eye, my entire forehead broke out. And it's, it's like, oh my gosh, but it was because it was opened in a dramatic way through the contact with another human being who created and prodded and allowed me to work deeper than I had before. None of this was happening on a conscious level. It was more of a subconscious opening and then awareness that, oh, that's what's happening. You don't always get all of that information as you're experiencing these things. It may come afterwards. If you get it during that time, that's wonderful. It also may come as a premonition or a warning so you won't fall too hard as you go through some of these challenges that come about as a result of becoming more consciously aware of your connections with the multiverse, with the multidimensional being that you are. As that happens, then the connect with other worlds, spirit guides, ghosts, And ghosts that don't necessarily mean that they have been in this world before. They can be from many different planes. You learn about thought forms, a residue that remains in an area because of the kind of activities that have been going on in a certain space, negative and positive. Those thought forms are still there and they can create an impact on you if you're sensitive and unaware. People who see ghosts, if you hang out with them long enough, you can develop that ability because it changes your vibration. People who are in high high contact with other beings, and you know that's again putting it on a better, good, best level. It that isn't what it's about. It's just a way of navigating, a way of getting information. If you spend time around them, then you also have the opportunity to have that awareness yourself. I went to a UFO convention and I was told, um, don't stay, just go for a short time. Don't stay. Before the convention, there was this beautiful, huge white owl that flew over um, like two days before it was supposed to be there, flew over in the sky and it's like, oh my gosh, and we're in Texas and this, uh, this isn't something you expect to see there, especially in the middle of the day. Huge, gorgeous. Didn't have a camera. <laughs> okay, so that that is has a tendency to be attributed to that kind of contact. Um, going to the event, everything was fine. I was taking pictures of the people who were there, it's kind of you know to document that I had been there and that this was going on. And I was I had also interviewed a, a couple of the people, but I also I've had my own. Um, interaction with with this type of of energy and it it shifts your world It, it blows you away when these things happen because it makes an impact on you 
and your body, your energy. There is a feeling. You can sense it. And when the people talk about real crop circles and fake crop circles, there is a difference. There is a resonance. This, this, is, this is something when you hear those words, vibration, frequency, resonance, harmonics, those are the best words we have to give you an idea that you may be able to do your own homework. When you go into a place like this, it feels different. When you get the goosebumps, it feels different. When you have the ringing in your ears, it feels different. When your throat tightens, it feels different. Pay attention to those signals. That's your barometer. That's your guideline. It's guidance and guideline. So you can navigate this without anybody else telling you you're right or you're wrong. If it feels a certain way, then you know beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's your way of knowing it. That's your way of making that information accessible. It's your blueprint, your recipe. And that's what you're doing with this in terms of creating more of a conscious awareness. Back to the UFO thing. I go there and everything's fine until I take pictures of the people who are taking pictures of the attendees. Then my eyes start burning. And I had been told just to stay for a certain time. So we said our goodbyes and left. But what I have learned in those kinds of experiences, that when my guides give me an information piece, something that I am given um, an opportunity to listen to, If there's something that's more important and I'm going against or getting drawn in or not following, then there's a reason. The reason was the timing of our return home. (laughs) If we hadn't left at the time that we did, as it was, we went through the middle of a storm that was producing all sorts of wonderful tornadoes. And if you've ever seen storm chasers and things like that, when you're going through those in the dark, you can't outrun them because you can't see them. And the timing for us was that we entered that storm pattern. And I said, I said to Andy, my partner, I said, you know, this looks like tornado weather. After we get home, we saw the, you know, the whole, the whole weather thing and what had happened. But the dream before had given me a a clue and it didn't make sense. The dream was, and I'll only give you part of it, that we were going to be going into a strong wind. And usually, if that happens, you you just want to either turn around, go the other direction or stay away, you know, get out of it. But the, the direction in the dream was to continue going into that strong wind. Everything was going to be okay. And the wind that we drove through at one point when we stopped at a rest spot was so, so really incredibly powerful, strong, that it kept the doors closed. And so it was easier to go in and out of of certain doors because they weren't quite in the direct path. But it was, it was an amazing storm. And I tried to take pictures. But these things that we are given directive to do sometimes don't have anything to do with the event they have to do with keeping us on task or on path in the flow and keeping us out of harm's way. And when you understand that there's no judgment, it wasn't a good, bad, it was a, this is your time. You will do this, but you do not need to stay for the event. And that was the reason. The time played out. There was a whole lot more to that in terms of what happened back at home. But those are the things that we learn how to do when we trust our guidance, our guides, our intuition, all of those words that say the non-logical, non-linear mind. It's nice to be able to make plans. It's nice also to be able to abort those plans when something feels out of place. I've had information from non-traditional sources 
from guides, from others. This was incredibly different. It wasn't, it didn't feel the same as my normal guidance, but there had been someone in my house who put little booby traps all around the house, giving it a name other than booby trap is unnecessary. But at one point, I was told, Bob's your uncle. And at my computer, there was a little picture of my Uncle Bob, who had died recently, just peeking out of the corner of my date book, peeking out as a way of saying, we got your back, it's okay. Bob's your uncle. No one else would know that. They wouldn't have been able to identify the picture. It had nothing on it. It was simply a way to connect with me and let me know there was a higher element playing out here. But what that little exercise did was connect me with my dog. She stayed at the doorway to each room until I collected the foreign particles, (laughs) the booby traps, and removed them. And at that point, when I looked at her, she would blink. Are we done? Yes or no? And she would blink once or twice. It was an amazing, amazing experience because it called all of my stuff, all of my potential to create a negative to the present. Should I be afraid? Should I be angry? Should I be reactionary? No. This is the situation. We'll dissolve it, resolve it, let it go. So we removed those things. I developed an appreciation for the ability that animals have to help tune us in and keep an eye on us from multidimensional states when we pay attention. And that there was another element present beyond my own guides who was also keeping watch. Now, I've also dealt with the remote viewing aspect of it. And some of those things, those activities, are not, um, shall I say, being done in the best interests. So when you become a part of that, or you get caught up in it, or it is perpetrated upon you, simply because you are a curious being, and someone else is interested There is an element at, I think, at play that is also operating for your highest good. And if you keep yourself out of that reactionary state, eye for an eye state, vengeance, somebody will pay, who did this? You allow that other aspect, that other element to come in and assist. I'm not using the word rescue. There is no rescuing necessary. You are either given assist or not. Because it's you who is creating that outcome on a different plane. You get into dream work and realize the kinds of dreams you have at night will give you an ability to upgrade your day. If you allow the dreams at night to show you the way you're thinking or misconstruing events, You can upgrade your daily events. When you go in and have a conversation with somebody, or if someone asks you to do something against your own divine nature, and you agree, take a look at what you're doing during the day. How are you compromising? How are you giving in? How are you possibly running amok? And go back into the dream time and change it. As you become more, more, uh, I guess, quantumly adept, uh, consciously aware, you begin to realize life is happening And your creation is happening every single minute. It's overwhelming if you try and focus on all of that. So you just do, to the best of your ability, your own part to upgrade and put out a better you. As you do that, you draw others who are doing that same thing. You don't always recognize them. We don't always recognize them because they may be of different nationalities. They may be of different species. 
They may be of different dimensions. And that's where it gets incredible. Because as you do that, you begin to see. You begin to develop that awareness. You begin to develop that framework, that network, that new being. And when people talk about this 2012 thing, this 2012 thing is is just a way of saying here in a nutshell, something's changing and it's big. (laughs) But we've been working up to this for a long time. And all of these abilities have been denied or put in the category of out to lunch. Crazy. No, there are abilities that we don't have a perfect language to identify. But if you want to read a few books to give yourself some background and some support for what you're believing and you're experiencing and that you can do and that you can trust and you can know more about yourself, start with learning how to breathe, learning how to access your chi, improve your prana, because it takes that warrior spirit. It takes that heart to keep the energy up and to keep the energy fluid and fluent and in motion so you don't drag on some of the baggage that comes around as a result of people thinking in a more dualistic eye for an eye kind of way. You don't have to do that. It has to do with being your own best advocate, being your own best cheerleader. Remember when we talked about walking? You learn how to walk and it makes a difference who's standing around you. Oh no, you're going to fall. And maybe I should say learning a bike, <laughs> learning to ride a bike. Uh, and just to give you an idea, there are different ways of doing this and different ways of motivating people. <sighs> My father gave me a bicycle and took the seat off so that I wouldn't be tempted to sit on the seat as I learned how to ride the bicycle. Now, anybody else, maybe, would know that's really not a good safety factor. And there could have been all sorts of negative outcomes. My father, with the best of his ability, was trying to give me an incentive to continue riding the bike and standing up. I learned how to ride a bike. I don't remember being in any way, shape, or form injured. I do know now thinking, oh, my goodness, that could have been unpleasant. But instead of judging and saying anything about that, I learned to ride a bike. It worked. And I don't remember being afraid. I don't think I knew that that was not a good thing to do. But so it's that temptation to look at others and judge them. There's a reason each of us is here. There's a reason that these actions in our presence cause us to think certain things or not think certain things. But before we look to anybody else, we look to ourselves and say, How can I make this work for me? How is this in my best interest? How can I see beyond what is here in front of me to know I can do this? This is my challenge. This is my role. There is more here than meets the eye. If I am the best that I can be, I will see it. I can see it. It is part of me. And when I begin to expand that expression of myself, I bring in more awareness and more ability to transcend limitations, whether I'm awake or asleep. Then I begin to hear in certain moments things that I couldn't hear. Again, it depends on we are living in a body that has a response to environment, to the things that are in, and this is one of the ways I was, be, I was able to tell that something was ha- happening was different. The barometric pressure would shift. I would feel a different tension. I would feel goosebumps. Then I knew there's something else in my, in my environment that is causing this, that is enabling this, that is activating this. And that was a way for me to understand, okay, something else has shifted. What's going on? And some days you're at a, you're more receptive. Certain times of the day, you're more receptive. Certain states of mind, if you've just lost somebody, 
you're close to and grieving, that puts a whole different element. And it really, um, it's like putting a blanket around you because those, those emotions that are triggered through the grief process ha- create a dampening effect. In some ways, they're a catalyst, but it's also a dampening effect. So you, you have to be aware that some of these things will shift your own sensitivity and just allow that and know it right now. All this activity with the sun for me has increased. um, uh, It's like a hyper alert state, a hyper activity. And yes, there will come a downtime with that, but then it goes back to that hyper higher frequency acting. And so I'm, I'm having more of these experiences with other dimensions and from what I have been given transdimensional beings states of awareness that weren't as obvious or as easy for me to access before. Now it doesn't hurt that I've also been doing this other stuff and that I was introduced to this kind of connection through the um, interaction with the nightlight, that nightlight presence, the energy, the consciousness that I connect with has never gone away has always been, since 1997, a part of my reality. And right now in my office, in my home, there is a nightlight that does that kind of engagement. In my bedroom, I have the nightlight. When I go to sleep at night, the nightlight goes off. It's my connection to this other dimension, reality, awareness, way of being in the world that reminds me 24-7, we are more than what we seem. And so is everything else. Animals have souls. They have spirit. They have guardians. They are not just a one-dimensional presence here for our dancing and dining pleasure. So as we realize where we are on this spectrum, there are others far beyond us who are also learning how to be in their own realm. And at some point, their realm and ours is going to intersect. So as we make that transition into the multiverse, we're going to have a few surprises, some jump starts, some setbacks, and some revelations. But before that happens, Whatever you can do to expand your consciousness, to open and awaken your awareness of the larger reality will help you. It will help you to understand that one of the, one of the real factors here that we have to get beyond is fear. The fear that something is going wrong, that something will go wrong, that something isn't right. Now, there's a difference between that life-threatening thing of, okay, my, my physical presence is being threatened. And you have a spirit guide who says, run, and you run. That's a little different. But because someone is different than you, or because someone does something differently, or a spirit does something, you do not have to be afraid of that. Suspend the judgment, suspend the fear, and say, what if? What am I being given an opportunity to experience so that I can know more, so I can grow more? What if everything here was a preparation for something more? What if everything here is an opportunity to become transcendent, to become more fluid in that light body form? But you have to experience it here to integrate it to make it real, to make it stick. We were driving in traffic, and I know all of this good stuff. What I practice is a different story. (laughs) I'm looking out and I'm saying, I hate it. But what I used was the term, I hate people who do that. Somebody had cut close in traffic in front of us. And I immediately choked on my tea. <laughs> it's choked. I don't usually, I was going to try and recover, you know, and swallow. Okay. Spit it out. 
And I realized, oh my gosh. Andy said, what's wrong? Uh, Well, it was a redirect. What I had said had nothing to do with the reality. The reality was that made me uncomfortable. It wasn't about hate. It wasn't about people. It wasn't about judgment. It was about, oh my gosh, that made me, that made me afraid. Oops. Oops. I don't feel good. That, that could have caused an accident. And as I got into thinking about that, of we don't know what it's like to be in somebody else's shoes. Some people on the road in front of us have depth perception. They don't know when they're cutting somebody else off. I have sometimes jumped in front of somebody thinking they know they're okay. But if the person's driving an 18 wheeler, if the person's driving a motorcycle, if the person has five or six other people in the car and they're chatting away with them or texting, which, you know, anyway, all those things are a factor. And until we have driven the semi, we've driven the motorcycle, we've driven with a carload of people calling our attention elsewhere, we don't know the other person's reality. But my immediate awareness was my language, what I said, came back to bite me. I choked on my own words. That's an example, a real life example of how this stuff works and how it works very fast and furious when you are trying to upgrade your stuff, you will be given little instances like that that you can either learn from or discount. That's just, I'm trying to give you an analogy for how other circumstances can create that same kind of immediate feedback. And what I was trying to do, the goal was to help a friend who was going through an experience with somebody who had devalued her with every word and every thought, but said, I love you. And the, the actions weren't being mirrored. So in trying to relate that, I had my own experiences of what did I really feel when I said those things? What was I feeling? I was feeling hurt. I was feeling threatened. I was feeling, ah, and I wasn't hurt, but the potential to be hurt that, you know, somebody was threatening my existence. This is all about getting to a point where you can sense others who will be foreign, unlike anything you've experienced, and allow that to be just perfectly fine because you are growing and you will know more. That's food for thought for the day. Expanding your conscious awareness, working with ghosts, working with non-physical forms, working with your own ability to sense, intuit, create, manifest, become more consciously aware of the potential for miracles and more.